Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Dear blessed Lord, we, uh, we begin with praise when we speak to you, Lord. We thank you for who you are and all that you do. And what you do, Lord, is um, speak back. And you do it in a variety of ways. And, Lord, I'm so very thankful. I'm so thankful to, um, to hear the witness of the saints, to hear how uh, you are not present just on Sabbath. You are present throughout the week, Lord, in these lives of, of us who, who just love you and, and know that any goodness that we have is yours and that we need you so much and that when we ask, you do answer them. And um, Lord, as, uh, as we have, have uh, lifted up some requests, Lord, I just want to quickly uh, go through them, Lord, for this bike marathon that Colton is going to participate in. Lord, the purpose is for the St. Johnsbury Cal Caledonia Christian School to continue. And we know what a blessing Christians are. And he's loving it, Lord, and he's not the only one. There are several who are, that I've, there are others right in that school that I've heard uh, are loving it as well. Uh, Lord, we are just delighted to, to, to hear that uh, Jeremy has decided that he wants to be baptized, that he wants to make that, that step of commitment. And we have seen, Lord, um, the way this young man loves you. And so we ask for continued guidance and light as he studies deeply with Pastor Tom. Thank you. Um, we pray, Lord, for uh, Johanna. We pray with her. Uh, she asks for awareness and for wisdom. And as she um, brings what she knows about you to her work in various ways, um, lead and guide her, Lord. Uh, for Therese and her colleagues who are suffering, may they not suffer consequences of coming forward of being <coughs> honest as you would have us be. For Joni, Lord, that as she implores her friend Cynthia to, to help her find this fulfillment, the fulfillment is, at, you know, it's, it's right within her reach, Lord, as she just turns to you. So may she see that. And finally, Lord, <coughs> um, the way that you speak to us through Ellen White and the writings that she has, that she has left us to, to um, point us to your word, Lord. And in this case, um, I, can, I, can't, I can't agree more. And I can't, Lord, um, say anything but that it strikes at the heart, the very heart of me. Um, if we are unwilling to share what we know, Lord, um, we are culpable. So may we, may we just hear that, that request that comes from you to let everyone know what is available to them if they turn their hearts to you. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for loving us the way you do and showing us the way. Um, I ask that you will um, bless Pastor Bruce this morning, his message to us, that we will each hear it, hear in it what we need to hear. Thank you for your Sabbath day. And I pray all this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, 
that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Mm -hmm. This is the word of the Lord. I, uh, I want to share a message with you today that I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed sitting with the Lord and letting him share with me. What's the message of the hour? What do you want people to get today, Lord? What do you want them to, to hear? What do they need to hear? Well, in all the situations that we're dealing with, a lot of turmoil going on, the whole uh, meaning of the message today is take heart. Be comforted. God has us. Kind of piggybacks on the message that I had last time. Thank you for your prayers. I, I appreciate that. The uh, title of the message today, Sucked In, Washed Up, and Blown Over. <clears throat> I want to tell you the true story about Chipper, a parakeet. One second, Chipper was sitting peacefully in his cage when suddenly he was sucked in, washed up, and blown over. Chipper's problems started when his owner decided one day that she was going to clean his bird cage with a vacuum cleaner. Oops. Don't get ahead of me. <laughs> so she took the attachment off the end of the vacuum cleaner and she stuck it up into the cage and turned it on and sure enough it was working great and everything was going fine until the telephone rang. So she reached over to grab the telephone and could no more than say hello when she heard <laughs> and she looked over and Chipper was gone. Well, in a panic, she put the phone down, she reached over, turned off the vacuum cleaner, opened up the bag in the back, and there was Chipper. <clears throat> he was uh, stunned. He was alive, but he, he, he wasn't reacting too much. I mean, she saw he was so, so dusty and, and dirty, she took him into the bathroom, she turned on the water to rinse him off. And then as she's rinsing him off, she realized, wow, he's shivering and he's, and he's probably cold. So she did what any pet owner that loved her pet would do. She reached over and she grabbed a blow dryer. And she blasted him with hot air. And poor Chipper didn't know what did him. He'd been sucked in, washed up, and blown over. Well, a few days later, her neighbor called and said, how's Chipper doing? She said, well, he doesn't sing much anymore. He kind of sits there. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, something like that would probably take the song out of anybody's heart, wouldn't it? <laughs> but I've got to ask you today, being sucked in, washed up, and blown over. Has that ever happened to you where you were like Chipper, sailing along, life was, was fine, and then all of a sudden you got set on a road of rocky, bumpy, things going wrong in your life? Have you had that experience? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, how do we handle these hard times? Sometimes people can get marred for life, never to be the same again. And like Chipper, we can have a hard time bouncing back. Well, that's what I want to share with you today is some thoughts on how to handle these difficult times that we find ourselves in. If we're tempted to feel that, that uh, we, we need to be reminded of how God views the hard knocks that come our way. Uh, our scripture reading, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, get us started. Where God says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. Did you catch three points that I want to share with you? Three points can be drawn from this text. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Point number one, according to God, we can expect trials in our lives and sometimes fiery ones. Expect it. Point number two, Christians 
are not exempt. Have you ever been, uh, uh, well, no, have you ever seen anyone enter into the experience of baptism, believing that once they got baptized, they would never have to worry about sin again? Oh, gee. Oh, oh gee. It lasted 24 hours. 20, well, thank you. Uh, you know, that kind of happened to me. And boy, that can be a devastating thing when the reality sets in and you realize, wait a minute, maybe my baptism didn't take. That's a tough feeling. And point number three in this text, since the trials come to everyone, they're not just for punishment only. They can be for character building, developing our characters. So we have to be careful when trials come, they can sometimes be misunderstood. When we side with God, then his enemies become ours. So how are we then to handle these trials? Well, verse 13, continuing on, 1 Peter chapter 4, but rejoice as you partake of Christ's sufferings, when his glory will be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Rejoice over fiery trials? Now, I've often wondered, what could carry someone through the fiery trial of martyrdom? Yeah, you ever thought of that? Just consider, the best example we have would probably be Jesus, our Lord. <clears throat> After hours of torture, trial, and crucifixion, Jesus first forgave his Roman enemies, saying, Father, forgive them. They just don't know what they're doing. And then he granted eternal life to a repentant thief, saying, I promise today that you will be with me in paradise. And again, this is after torture, trial, treated unfairly, hung on a cross, naked, Embarrassment. And as darkness surrounded him, and with Satan whispering doubts, he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Discouragement can easily set in when we go through fire and trials. Even Jesus was faced with excruciating experiences. And then he declared, It is finished. And then after crying out with a loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit, Jesus died. That's a fiery trial. I have the privilege of sharing my sermons before they ever come to the church with four friends of mine that I've made. Two of them I get to walk with in the mornings when we walk together. And each Sabbath morning as we're driving out to come to church, then Linda and I take the little trail wherever that we go, we walk by, and uh, <clears throat> we find them, and we get to hand them copies of the sermon. <clears throat> so they get the sermon ahead of time. And on Fridays, I get to spend time with two of my friends, two guys that I've made friends with, and uh, they let me practice on them. I get to share the sermon. And uh, I think it's really a, a privilege that God has given me people that need to know this in a very unique and interesting way, and they don't even realize that they're getting the gospel. I guess they do. They probably do. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. But, um, yeah, what a, what a great way for, for uh, God's message to be proclaimed. Jesus went through a lot. One Bible text that helps explain how Jesus was able to go through all of that is Isaiah 26, 3, that says, Thou shalt keep him in what? Perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. How could a person go through a fiery trial? Trust in God confidence in their maker. Knowing and trusting
trusting God matters. And then there was another group who was facing fiery trials, but they didn't do so well. It's that group over in Revelation chapter 16. And I have two verses, 9 and 11, where it says that men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. The plagues were falling. And instead of rejoicing, like we're told up here in 1 Peter, it says that they began to point to God and say, why are you doing this to me? I hate you. Blaspheming God. That's, a, that's quite a, a, a comparison. I noticed that they didn't blame God for the plague, according to this, but they turned on him because he had the power to take it away, and he didn't. That's why it says they blame God. And then it goes on, and they repented not to give him glory, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Fiery trials come. How are we going to handle them? Was it Isaiah 26, 3 that made the difference between attitudes of these folk? No peace, no trust. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, the one who keeps his mind on you, stayed on you, because he trusts in you. They don't have peace, they don't have trust, so they don't believe that God is taking care of them. And thus they turn on God. I'd like to, um, to say maybe these people at the testing time took a shortcut and they failed to learn from their fiery trials. Isaiah 30 has something to say about this. Two verses, 19 and 20. This again teaches us that God can use things like this to teach us, to guide us, and to build our characters. Isaiah 30, 19, 20. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou wilt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. So a person is going through a trial. And they cry out to God, and it says God will be merciful to them. Not maybe, not perhaps, not if, not a suggestion, but he will be gracious at the voice of thy cry. <clears throat> There's a cry of those going up with fiery trials, and when he shall hear it, will answer thee. God hears, he answers. And don't ever be tempted to believe that he doesn't. He does. And then it goes on to say, Though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the waters of affliction. What was that? I beg your pardon? I cry out to God and he gives me what? The bread of adversity. Waters of affliction. Did the unrepenting ones in Revelation turn on God because they didn't get what they wanted? Are some under the impression that we get to dictate to God how life treats us? Or do we experience peace in whatever comes by trusting that our God is in charge, no matter what comes? Then it says, yet your teachers shall not be removed, but your eyes shall see your teachers. Teachers, what is that referring to? <laughs> Affliction, controversy in your life, trials. Trust and peace will get us through the fiery trials that God promises. We are going to face these, it'll happen, and we need to trust God. How's your trust factor today? COVID-19 is a plague from God, or it's one of the teachers preparing us for bigger trials to come. Ooh. Which is it? Number two. 
B, the B answer. I agree with you. Imagine a Christian family facing the fiery trial of being thrust into the amphitheater at Rome. No, let's don't. That's too horrible to even think of, isn't it? You know what I'm talking about. You know what, what actually happened back in Roman days when people professed Christianity and they confessed Jesus before the, the world and what they did to them. Horrible, horrible things. So, <clears throat> what we have to consider is what prepared these people for that moment. Isaiah 30, Isaiah 26. Was it life's small tests that prepared them for the big one? The little trials that come in life to prepare us for the big one? Yeah. So when under the gun, under real persecution, did they stand and shout, hey, that's not fair? Or did they turn their faith and trust toward God? Trust. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I've got to tell you, Brother Danny, you are a man who understands fiery trials. And I admire how you handle it with the trust and the faith and the confidence that you have in God. And we pray for you, brother. And we pray for your family, Joey. And we pray for, for the circumstances that, that God can send our way. And you are a prime example in my life of people that, that I look up to because of the faith you have. Thank you for letting my face shine so we all can see it. It's not, it's not being uh, unused. Uh, your fiery trial is a witness, being a witness to all of us. Thank you for that. Okay, so here uh, Paul now instructed Timothy like this in 1 Timothy 6, 11 to 15. But you, O man of God, flee these things and seek righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And then he says, Fight the good fight of faith. Faith. There it is. That's our job today. Building faith and confidence in God. That's where we are. That's what, what we are meant to do. To find the faith that it takes to get us through these fiery trials. And that's what trials do for us. Trusting God through small trials so that when the big ones come, as promised that they would, we will trust him and not blame him. Confidence is created through experience. When I turn that light switch on every time I go into the room and the light comes on, I begin to have confidence that every time I turn that switch, the light will come on through experience. Here are some encouraging words. <clears throat> the pen of inspiration tells us all about the sins that overcame Noah, Lot, Moses, Abraham, David, and Solomon. That even Elijah's strong spirit sank under his fearful trial. Jonah's disobedience of Israel's idolatry of, uh, are faithfully recorded for us to read. Peter's denial of Christ, the sharp contention of Paul and Barnabas, the failings and infirmities of the prophets and the apostles are all laid bare. Before us lie the lives of the believers, of the who? The believers, with all of their faults and follies, which are intended as a lesson to all generations following. Had the faithful as they are referred to, been without minor fault, they would have been more than human. Our sinful natures would despair forever, but seeing where they struggled and fell, how they took heart again and conquered through the grace of God, we are encouraged and led to press over the obstacles paving our way. I like the sound of that. It helps me to know that my brother Peter went through the same kind of trials and sometimes he didn't make it. 
but he didn't give up. Amen. We look at Elijah. He was a man of God. He was powerful. I mean, he, the miracles that, that God did through this human being and how he was up on Mount Carmel and he put the gods to the test and proved to the universe who the true God is when fire came down. And they grabbed the horses by the reins when it was raining so hard that they couldn't even see to get down off the mountain. And he ran with the horses. And when he got down, he heard that Jezebel was looking for him and was ready to take him out. And he got scared and ran. What? What? And if Elijah can, can fail, Lord, I guess that leaves room for me in my little faith that needs to grow. Thank you. Thank you for being patient with us. <clears throat> and when he was two or three days journey out into the desert under the juniper tree, and he laid there wanting to die, God sent an angel and ministered to him. Fed him. Let him take a nap. Fed him. Let him take another nap. And then when he woke up, he had a talk with Elijah. Elijah, what do you think? Who is God? Is he in the wind? Is he in the fire? Where's God? Oh my. And so he boistered him up and then took him back where he needed to be. What doest thou here, Elijah? What are you doing? I've got a mission for you, my brother. Oh my. COVID-19 can help prepare us for what's coming. <clears throat> it can be faced a number of ways. And don't say that that's not fair. Learn from the teachers. Bread of adversity. The waters of affliction. Learn from them. Be ready to stand like the three worthies, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like those families that were thrust into the amphitheater in Rome. Like the Christian martyrs who were tied to stakes, and like Jesus himself. Take heart. If you're facing fiery trials, experience the perfect peace promised to everyone whose mind is stayed on God in every circumstance. Anytime you can turn your faith and trust to God and say, I'm hanging on, Lord. No matter what, I'm not going to let go. And I want to close with this thought. It's Romans mm -hmm. chapter 8. There's a few verses for us to consider as we take this message home today. Verses 35 to 39. <clears throat> Confidence verses. Confidence. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Oh, oh that's a good question. Can we? Is it possible? Well, shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? It is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded Paul says that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, powers, things present or things to come, height, depth, nor any other creature should be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Do you agree today? Mission accomplished. Thank you.